What up everyone, <laughs> welcome to the review of the Acolyte from the Disney Plus show. Oh my gosh, I've got it up here as well because I want to kind of show some clips or at least talk about it. It's like you've already heard like how bad the reviews are by audience fans at least. The fact that once again uh, people online are like oh it's bigots, it's uh, racist or people are just slandering this um, show and then they remove the audience score for Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and it's just hilarious for me that it gets so low and people like put it on that. It's still a thing. But yes, the show is so fine or bad. Like I'd say it's fine because it's so average. Like if I was an average person watching this show, I'd be like, okay, I can see why I enjoy this. I had a friend who liked the first episode, first two episodes when they released. I didn't like them off the bat. This was just such a boring show. And I'm just like, because I'm doing a whole series of you, I can't go into each episode and what I didn't like about each one or what I did like about each one. It's just so many things like that I just I can't do. So then what I will do is I guess kind of say bits and pieces here and there of the show which just obviously didn't work for me. This show altogether is like a 3 out of 10 for me. It's weird like if I was from a Star Wars perspective from just an audience or normal audience perspective I could see it being a 5 max which still isn't good at all but uh here we are so you can see here in the background i got episode one playing a bit there were things that obviously as the show was coming out people kind of pinpointed and were like oh jedi never takes their weapon out unless prepared to kill all this kind of stuff it's like where these rules come from those small things like that i'm not really fussed about because i can like it's a hundred years it's well it's not even a hundred years it's like probably it was like 60 to 70 years i believe that's before phantom menace but rules can still change within, I guess, two generations or something like that. Very unlikely. If it was set like several hundred years to like a thousand years, I'd be like, okay, a bit more believable. This is just like two generations later, uh, like Obi-Wan's going to be born. Qui-Gon should be born in the next generation. It, it's, it's quite a jump there when you really think about it like that. But it's also just one person's perspective. And obviously she seems to think that's what Jedi do. So I'm not going to go too much of that because it's like its own little thing and it's easily just not... Compared to the whole story, it's such a small thing. Overall, with the show itself, it's just so bland and poorly written. Like, everyone's like, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, people wanted Darth Vegas in this. People knew Darth Vegas was going to be in it. And now that Darth Vegas is in it, people are complaining about it. It's not the fact that people are complaining about Darth Vegas being in this. They're complaining about the fact that he's in there just as a little cameo, a little teaser. Just like this throwaway shot, he's there. And I don't want to argue against what's canon, what's not canon, all this kind of stuff. It just doesn't, he's not there for any purpose. You could take him out and it changes nothing. Seeing him there, you don't know whether he's the master of Kamir, the stranger. You don't know if he's observing from afar and no one knows he's there. Because like Kamir seems really lost and lonely. Just Unless he's putting on this whole facade, which and they've revealed in season two, then Osha's going to be betrayed again. And then it's just going to be the whole same thing with uh, Sol again. And then it's kind of just like, not really well written there. Um, but was he really feeling lonely? Did Darth Vegas even confront, like, comfort him, or is this Darth Vegas not there? Because I've seen people say, "Oh, Darth Vegas is viewing from afar." Or oh, it's a little cameo because Darth Vegas is the master, and he's not ready to, ready to be revealed yet. The show doesn't tell us that. We're all making these presumptions, and it's fine to have presumptions so you can go into season two. But when most of the show is just teaser, 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 and you don't actually really get much from it, it just doesn't work. It falls flat, and that's why when you get to episode eight, even episode seven, and all these reveals happen, it's like. Not really reveals. So here the big thing was this was advertised as like a murder mystery. And then when the first episode came out and it was like, okay, we already know that Osha, our main character, isn't actually being thought of as the person who's doing the killing. It's May. They already know that from the start. The Jedi already know this, all this kind of stuff. There goes the mystery. People I saw online saying it's not a murder mystery. It's about a murder mystery, but the mystery isn't who did it, but it's why they did it. Still don't know any of that. We don't know why Camille got May to kind of kill these four Jedi specifically. Why was he wanting to kill all these Jedi? Why did he want her to kill without a weapon? None of that's answered by the end of the show. It's all set up for season two anyway. So that mystery isn't even solved. It's just so many stupid things. Everyone already predicted Kamir was gonna be the uh, villain. And that's the thing, he's the villain. And it's fine to have a story where you sympathize with the villain and you kind of be like, okay, I get the villain's perspective. You can do that stuff. No one really sympathizes with Kamir because we don't really know. We know, okay, Vanessa was his master. Everyone predicted that already after we saw the scar and he was betrayed for some reason. Cool, that's sympathetic, fine. Everyone loves him though because he's a good looking guy and everyone's just like, oh, Darth Biceps. Oh, he's taking a shower. And then you look at the audio commentary for the episode itself. It's like, uh, there's the throbbing of the lightsaber against his throat. Oh, 
uh, she gazes from afar as he swims and it's all this kind of stuff and it's like okay th this is like some smart novel thing going on here so stuff like that people love him because of who he is and he's probably the best character in the show which is saying very little because Soul was well, arguably the best character until Soul's character just suddenly became this mess of a thing the start, Soul seemed like, okay, he's this good Jedi, very much like Qui-Gon, everyone's like inspired by Qui-Gon. And then after they do the reveal, where all these people get killed, and that's fine, you know, everyone, that's like a fun episode. Dialogue-wise, it was dog shit, why is he suddenly trying to kill Mei, Mei flipping here and there, like all these things. I'm such, I'm writing, this is such a mess of a video I'm making right now, because there's just so many thoughts, but the writing is so poor with how it switches between Mei and Osha wanting to be friends, or Osha caring for Mei, and then Episode 4, she's like, oh, it's not my problem, it's the Jedi will deal with it, I've done my part. And then they flip and then it's like, oh, come with me, Osha. It's like, no, you killed people, Mei, you killed Jedi. And they fight and then they switch places for some reason. And then even after Mei, like, we have Saul, he's like, I'm going to tell you the truth. And we have Episode 7 happens then. And presumably that's the story he's telling Mei. But then for some reason in Episode 8, Mei doesn't know that she's made of the Force and that she's the same person as Osha. Oh, that whole virgins thing going on. She doesn't know these things. I know she's trying to tell us still. And it's just like, didn't you not tell her through the flashback in episode 7 that we saw? Wasn't that you telling her that story? And then unless you only told her some of that story, and then... But we don't know which parts of the story you have told her. And like, when you didn't say, oh, when your mother was turning into this ghost thing, I didn't know what it was. I've never seen it before. To me, it looked like she was attacking you, attacking me, not sure I killed her or I stabbed her, whatever. That explains that. It's, it's all so stupidly written. And you know what's really like, honestly, just go watch a bunch of other people's videos on how poorly written this show is. There's a lot of stuff like Kiri Muni being there, he doesn't know that the Sith are there. And look, I can let those small things slide because it's never like everyone dies. Knew everyone was going to die. Either everyone was going to die or they're going to rewrite the whole Sith thing. Everyone died that heard specifically Sith being used. And then Vanessa as being such a really stupid person saying that, oh, it's all Rogue Jedi, it's all Rogue Jedi. It's still Rogue Jedi. The, people seem to have this idea that um, being on the dark side doesn't mean you're Sith or all this kind of stuff. Sith is a kind of dark side user. But balance is what the Jedi try to strive for. Keeping balance, which is pure good, pure good. Not pure Jedi, but pure good, pure light side of the force. That's what balance is in Star Wars. Don't let all these interviews you see of like even the Amandla and... Um, Leslie, like the main people of the show, they're like, oh, great Jedi this, oh, the balance, oh, you see the flaws of the Jedi. The great Jedi don't exist. Great Jedi aren't good. Great Jedi are essentially just people that are morally corrupt, in this, if for lack of a better description, morally corrupt, because they're good people, but they do questionable things, which means they are not bringing balance to the Force, because balance in Star Wars is pure light side. How can you have um, peace in the world and say there needs to be some darkness? Like the whole yin yang thing, yeah, sure thing, but in the Star Wars world, for there to be peace in the world, there has to be pure goodness. Any essence of the bad side, the dark side of the Force, brings out disruption and imbalance. And that's what George Lucas says. But that's not what Star Wars, Disney Star Wars seem to understand. For some reason, it's so stupid. But anyway, look, they already ruined Anakin by, like, his story by having the sequels take place like 20, 30 years later and then the Sith, the dark side, returned. You can tell me that's Ren, it's not really the Sith. It's the dark side, so balance was there for 20 years and then it was gone. But they've ruined him even more by having these people created of the Force, Mei and Osha created of the Force. People say, oh no, they're just two people separated into one, they doesn't ruin Anakin. I've seen that online, but it's not true because in the show they specifically state that these are basically the high midichlorian counts, they are the created of the Force. And then all these things, I've even seen Thor Skywalker say like, oh, if Soul is so fixated on wanting to prove the Vengeance happened, he has all the data on that data pad. Even Torben has that data. You don't need the living proof. If you leave them there, you bring the data back, show the council, here's this data we have, a proof of possibly a virgins. It's like, okay, well, we know those people are still there. You guys stay on that planet, monitor them. We're gonna make sure this verified this data or something and we'll send back up and then we'll send a proper team. Maybe people that can actually use the force instead of metal detectors to detect force sensitive things. But no, you got shit like this in like Master and Dara. It, I love this part, she's just sitting here watching on as like she beats up all these people and it's like, oh, okay, what are you doing Jedi? Just standing there, oh, slowly getting up, watching on. And she's just standing there in the background. She's just standing there in the background as they fight. It's so ridiculous. But that's because they don't understand that Jedi are good people. You can have flawed people in it, 
But the problem with this show is that basically everyone, every Jedi in it is flawed. You have Anakin Skywalker, sympathetic villain, did bad stuff, but we get it. And you can have the same thing with Kamir, but you can't have it end with his victory and Osha's victory and kind of end it like, oh, it didn't feel like it was like, oh, no, doom and gloom is coming. No, it felt like, oh, this is good. And it's also really stupid that, like I said, when I was talking about Osha and May earlier switching things, at the end, they're like, oh, Osha, you go with this stranger and I'll just stay here, get my memory wiped. I don't care about any of it. But you fact said that the whole fact that you were doing all this for was for Osha, May. You said that's what you were doing it for. And then now you're just like, I'll forget about you. It's no issue. It, it came out of nowhere. It's terrible writing, terrible writing. Oh, we don't want to tell the High Council this stuff. Why not? You have Jedi being murdered. You have evidence of that being done. Isn't that stuff like willing to like something you could look into? And I've seen people say, oh yeah, Jedi were killed, but I'm sure Jedi have been killed for the thousand generations already. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, but this many Jedi killed in quick succession. You've had several witnesses. And here's the biggest thing. At the end, when they put it all on Soul, it falls apart so quickly because in the first episode itself, oh my god, the first episode itself it says right here, I'm afraid I cannot afford to lose you to a field mission soul. You're far too valuable here. Just, it's like, oh, you're far too valuable here, soul. We can't lose you. You're too important here. Go on this, five seconds later, she does say go on this adventure and then he's gone for like however long this takes. But then also at the end of it, she's like, this guy that was far too valuable to our community, this guy that was too important for us here and clearly has all these years and records of him being a great person, doing all these great things and all these eyewitness accounts and everything. He's done all these bad things. He killed about 10 Jedi within the span of a couple of weeks, maybe months, who knows? We don't know how long it's been, but he's killed all these Jedi, you know, and everyone knows that he's, you know, snapped inside. It was very much like him because he was such a key person that we know him so well. Like I said, Soul's character was butchered. For the, most of the first few episodes, he wasn't in this like whole virgins thing. He, at the first episode, he's like, I know your sister's still alive. But he never once was like, we gotta prove this virgins thing now. He never once mentioned to anyone else that we gotta prove this virgins. It was only when everyone died that he was like, okay, now I need to prove this virgins thing. And that's what I mean, it came out of nowhere. It's like, now that we know this happened in the past after they showed us episode seven, now we know it, the audience, now the character's acting like it's something he wants because now we, the audience, knows it. But back when we didn't know it, the character never mentioned it because we weren't meant to know it because the writers didn't want us to know it. And it's just stupid things like that. Um, yeah, obviously episode three, like I, the thread, whatever whatever you want to call it, I've got no problem with them calling it that. There. I don't like them doing the hand movements. It's like coming on my ass shit all over. Um, the lightsaber fights, yeah, the lightsaber fights were good. Yes, Torben should have died to that Wookiee. He wasn't able to block it with that one hand there and everything like that. Um, it's kind of like, you don't know what happened to one, that Zam Zambark, whatever, mother and stuff like that. She's was bloody annoying. Um, Knight, so this fight scene, yeah, it's a good fight scene choreography wise. Um, there's a few times when I'm watching it and I'm like, I don't really like it. Like the number of times you see people swing and you're like, they're just swinging for the sake of it. And like, I, you can say that happens a lot in the prequels, but in the prequels, it kind of just works in a way which it feels natural. But here it feels a lot more like they're just swinging, swinging, especially in the night fight where you're like, oh, okay, lightsabers, different colored lightsabers. So it looks even better. And here she has this opportunity. She hits him twice in the head. Go for a stab, go for something else. You've got your lightsaber in the hand. If you're able to get your lightsaber to their head there, just go lower. Yes, we know that the Cortosis helmet is dead. Clearly you've seen it's gonna disrupt the lightsaber. Go low and just get him there. Your hand's already there. Just aim it low and you killed him or whatever. And also just quick note, he doesn't use, for some reason, he doesn't bring his Cortosis wrist gauntlet, go with him in the final episode. And it's just like, oh, okay. Uh, why aren't you using Cortosis as much as you did in the first fight here? Like, why is it that you're so much weaker all of a sudden? This guy, force pushed so many Jedi and for whatever reason separated them all where Jackie isn't here at the start of the fight, Soul isn't here at the start of the fight, Yord is there, look at him doing all that and everyone's like surprised and oh wow what's this going on? Why is that arm later on? Why aren't you trying to use it as effectively as you did in this fight in the final fight and yeah he's just he's very overpowered here just because the plot needed him to kill all these Jedi but in the final fight, he's not that powerful, even though they've shown that Saul right now is not in the best state of mind, which is very weird because, yeah, uh, it's just poor writing. It's just writing for the sake of the plot so that they can tell what they want to tell, but none of it really works. But Osha's arguably her best friend, Jackie, killed by this guy a few days later at max, we'll say a week later at max. 
she's siding with this guy and saying, I'm going to join you because my master killed my mom. And Sol being a stupid guy, not trying to actually explain anything. He's not trying to share, oh, this is what happened when we got there. Um, your mothers were saying threatening things like you're going to be the fall of the Jedi, all this kind of stuff's going to happen. And look, honestly, while watching the show, as it was, was coming out, I've seen three other shows. I saw The Bear, which was amazing. Apart from season three, which just felt like not as much happened. Um, I'm right now watching Only Murders in the Building, which is how you do a murder mystery. As cliche as some things in that are, that's how you do a murder mystery. And then finally, the big less show on YouTube. And here's the thing, $180 million per episode in this, in this show, $180 million per episode. And I enjoyed the big less show, which was made on Microsoft Paint. I enjoyed that more than this. And half of that show is just people getting high. Oh my god, so if you if you want something good to watch, it's over the acolyte, go and watch the Big Les show if you're not Australian or something. Just go watch it. It's hilarious. But no, this is just so bad. Oh yeah, and then this little rodent, this Basil guy, he just like suddenly I protects May in the final airplane or oh, airplane spaceship chase fight scene. And it's like what are you doing? What are you doing here, Basil? Just let it all happen. It's just really poorly written, and how this got greenlit is beyond me. And I love the fact that a lot of them are now saying, oh, Dave Filoni signed off on these things, or oh, Dave Filoni's a big part of it. Before this, Ahsoka came out, and that had mixed reviews. People loved it, people also hated it. Dave Filoni has always been a mixed bag. You can't say Dave Filoni is attached to this and kind of use him as an scapegoat. And it's just, it just, yeah, it doesn't work like that. So this is all Leslie Headland's thingy or whatever and whatever other writers have it, but she's the showrunner, so it's her story. She can't say, oh, Dave Filoni, we consulted him on this, this stuff, or he helped with the witches or whatever. It doesn't matter. You still made shit, so it's gonna be shit. You can't handball it to anyone else. At some point, you gotta, like, you should have written, seen the script and be like, nothing happens for most of this until the final two episodes. Like, you could take out half of this stuff and you would probably still get this as much as you got out of this if you watched the final two episodes. Like, it doesn't matter that Yord had an apprentice. It doesn't matter that he had an apprentice because she dies and she's never mentioned again. She doesn't, the, all the Jedi that died that Osha was friends with never affect her decision to join Camille the Stranger. Um, suddenly the, all the actions she did before this trying to figure out who was the killer don't matter because she covers it up anyway saying that Sol was the killer and all the times that she said Sol was a good guy, too important at the Jedi Temple to be gone and do all these missions. And the fact that she's like, oh, we have to have proper discussion before we do any actions. She goes against all that anyway in the final two episodes. So none of that matters. Oh my God, this as well. They like, oh, so he's, the Wookiee's here. And then he's got all these drawings here. The thing's stuck in his mind. What does this mean? It means nothing because the Jedi Wookiee does nothing. He's not a character. He's just there to be a Jedi there. He's as much of a... What do you call a red shirt as there? They just put this there to make it seem like, oh, there's something more. They put Torben there, drinking the poison, kill himself, not a Jedi thing to do. They make him do that, so that way we think, okay, he's burdened with some guilt. But his guilt is wanting to go home, and which is very pathetic for a Jedi as well. But he doesn't specifically do anything. He's not one that kills the mother. He didn't start the fire which burnt down that giant rock building or whatever, which is still May's fault, but no one seems to say anything about. He never killed anyone. He never did anything explicitly to hurt anyone. All he did was try to prove to the Jedi Council that a virgin's happened and then he went into like shut off for years. It should have been Sol or the Wookiee that did anything because Wookiee attacked his own people. Um, Vanessa, whatever her name is, the Matrix lady, she killed several witches with the mind stuff or whatever and Sol obviously killed the mother and let one child drop down. But the, it, the, yeah, it's all there just to make us think, oh, okay, something bad's happening. It's all red herrings and stuff like that. She looks terrified. Look, she's not a terrible actress. As bad as her performance is throughout the show, she's not the worst. I mean, a lot of performances are bad. But look how, look how Sol goes here. Look how clever all this stuff is. He seems very composed. He seems very good. Osha is alive. Look at all these reveals that are happening. And it changes their character. It changes things. But then it means nothing because the characters go back and forth. Or they still just go down a path which the plot just wants them to do. The writers just want them to go down. At the start of the show, Sol was the best character. Then they just made him care about the virgins and all this kind of stuff. And then Camille became the best character, even though we know barely anything about them. It's just, yeah, it's bad writing. If you enjoyed it, good for you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, and people, like, I enjoy bad stuff. My favorite Christmas movie is Love Actually, and I know half of that stuff is pretty bad. But with all this that happens, if this is, like, happening and no one, this doesn't raise an alarm, 
10 Jedi dead in quick succession, a Jedi killer out there, the fact that the Senate knows about it, or a Jedi itself has killed several people and then killed himself, uh, that thing is not really causing an alarm in this point in time. Once again, just one generation before uh, Qui-Gon's born or anything like that, um, and it's considered a norm then, then that's kind of really bad to say the least, if those things are like very normal, that's like, oh yeah, that happened regularly, it's not really something that raises a concern or the High Council should be bothered with. Oh my god, a terrible murder mystery, a terrible plot. Um, good idea? Very terribly executed, very terribly executed. Um, poor acting, mixed visuals, like when they're on the speeder bikes in the flashback scene, I'm like, this looks really bad. Some of it looks nice, some of it looks bad. Lightsaber fights, pretty good for the most part. And I don't like some of the slow-mo, but the intensity of them in the entire sense is good. So yeah, it's like a 3 out of 10 for me. Anyway, go watch other reviews for like specifics of how shit the plot writing is. And yeah, Jeremy Johns does a pretty good job at it, I guess, as well. But nah, anyway, I'm done. See you guys. <laughs>